Okay, now let's start plating our cells. So, the procedure is for primary cultures, you obtain the tissue from the animal under aseptic conditions. It is usually necessary to treat the tissue with enzymes, for example, trypsin or collagenase. So, as we have talked about previously, that if you want to a dissociated culture, you have to first of all break the tissue apart. I've shown you how we can titurate the tissue to make the cells become separate from each other. This can be assisted by trypsin, which is a protease which cleaves off protein molecules. And we know there are many protein molecules which are present on the surface of the cell. Function of these protein molecules is to make cells stick to each other or the extracellular matrix, for example. Collagenase, we know that collagen is one of the important proteins of the extracellular matrix. Collagenase is a specific protease that chews up the collagen molecule. After the cells have been treated with these enzymes, you need to make sure that the enzymes will, are no longer active, so they do not start damaging the cells that we need to grow. Serum is used to block the effect of these enzymes. Basically, you add serum, which is basically one of the components of blood which is commercially available. Uh, for example, from the fetal calf serum is available or other protein molecules. So you overwhelm these enzymes. You can also change, uh, rinse your cells. We talked about that when we were talking about centrifuges. So after you have blocked off these enzymes, you titurate. I've already shown you how we titurate. We can titurate cells. Then we evaluate the quality and the quantity of the cells. Quality of the cells is basically judgment of uh, the person who is doing the procedure and after certain experience, people can generally by looking at cells can tell whether the cells look healthy or do they look damaged. Also, it is important to quantify how many cells you have. I'll show you uh, soon that how we can count the number of cells in a sample. And after you have done that, then you can plate the cells on appropriately uh, coated dishes and you plate the amount of cells that you require for that particular experiment. So let's see how we count cells. We use a new bar hemostometer to count cells. This is basically a glass slide, a specialized glass slide, which has grids on it. Here you can see this is a glass slide which has two regions which have grids on them. One of these, this region is one millimeter square. One millimeter by one millimeter. This part of the slide is slightly lower than the rest of the slide. And the space is basically the distance between uh, the top and the bottom is 0.1 millimeter. So the internal space is one millimeter times one millimeter times 0.1 millimeter. So which is basically 0.1 millimeter cube. Okay. So each grid comprises of five large squares. So this grid, you can see here, there are five larger squares. One, two, three, four, and five. The area of this region is one millimeter times one millimeter that I have already shown you. And the volume, when we come to the volume, I've shown you this, this area is slightly lower than the rest of the slide. So the total area is 0.1 millimeter cube, which is basically 0.1 micron or also we can for the same of six uh, simplicity we can say it is 0.1 microliter which is basically 1 into 10 raised power minus 4 mls so 10 microliter of culture of the suspension which contains the cell is pipetted onto this cover slip and now you are ready to count the cells this is how it will look under the microscope so you have this area we have already seen this it has uh, these cells now you can start counting the cells the, generally the rule of thumb is you include the cells on the border of two sides and omit the cells on the other two sides so these cells will be counted will be included in the counting whereas these cells will be omitted Cells counted in the portion of the grid squares, multiplying the total number of cells in the entire grid by 10 to the raised power 4, we have seen the logic of that previously, gives the number of cells per ml. So let's do an arbitrary exercise. See 
is basically the number of cells per ml n is the average number of cells counted times 10 to the raised power 4 which is basically conversion of this into mls the total yield of our sample is c which is the cells per ml times the total volume of the sample so the total number of cells in one mil multiplied by the total number of mils will give you the total number of cells that you have produced from a particular procedure let's do an exercise for example the first count you got was 182 cells the other count was 175 cells and the total volume of your suspension cell suspension is 55 mls so let's see how we calculate the total number of cells present in this 55 ml the average cells counted count 1 plus count 2 divided by 2 which is basically 182 plus 175 divided by 2 is 178.5 so this is basically our c which is 178.5 and now we have to multiply it by 10 to the raised power 4 to get the number of cells per ml so this is the number of cells per ml and since we have 55 mls of the total cell suspension so this number multiplied by 55 gives us this this figure is the total number of cells we have in our sample which is 98 million 175 thousand cells present in that 55 ml that we produced so after we have done that we have measured the number of cells we have looked at the quality of the cells we pipette out the appropriate volume of the cell suspension and place it in a tissue culture dish or flask wherever you want to culture these cells make sure the tissue culture dish or flask are coated with appropriate substrate uh, generally the substrates people use uh, either tissue culture dishes are pre-coated or if it's a special type of cell you need to coat it with something different you can use collagen fibronectin laminin polylysine etc most tissue culture dishes are pre-coated the next day of course we have talked about this we need to change the media to get rid of the dead cells and of course provide fresh nutrients to the cells we have plated and this procedure will get us started and we will have our cells we have now counted the cells we have looked at evaluated their health and now we have plated the cells and we know exactly how many cells we have plated in per container or per tissue culture dish so we'll go on from there in the next module